Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know I'm glad to be here. So uh, the reason for this video is because the last video I made, it was uh, in part due to some comments. People were asking me to explain in greater detail about diesel fuel injector balance rates. Uh, if you guys did not see that video, uh, just check this link right here, or the ones inside of this video's description, uh, or the uh, the end screen that's going to pop up right here in the middle at the end of this video, and it'll take you back to the one I just mentioned. Anyway, again, I was going through comments in that video, and people were asking me about uh, what was happening with the interior restoration on this uh, 2007 late production uh, Chevrolet Silverado uh, 3500. Uh, again, this is my personal vehicle, and I, uh, I did a whole entire tear down on the interior, uh, put some HVAC stuff in it, replaced the carpet, and it all started with the head, uh, headliner right here. In the trailing end of that particular project, uh, a lot of the detail work uh, became uh, very, uh, very labor intensive and boring. And the, uh, the full feature videos on the interior restoration kind of stopped. And I only threw in some snippets here and there. Um, in uh, in other videos uh, kind of as um uh, transitional or filler uh scenarios and I, I attempted to keep everybody up to date but it appears that not everyone saw um all of the the areas where the truck had been featured uh in order to bring people up to speed so i'm just going to dedicate this video it's going to be a short one but i'm going to dedicate this video just to bringing everybody uh up to speed for the people who were interested and who wanted to know uh, kind of where the project sits and where things were uh, or how things were coming along. So let me get the windows down because it's hot in here and uh, And I'll go through a couple little things uh, about the interior on this truck Just so everybody is on the same page here and again This is because people were commenting and they were asking about it. as many of you know once upon a time My headliner was like falling down and it was nasty and I had glued it back on a couple times and that it was a temporary solution and you know 15 16 years later the thing had to be replaced so i ended up going full monty and getting some suede to reupholster this headliner with and i found that in order to get the headliner out of it i had to pull the seats out of the thing because i just couldn't get all this stuff out through the door because this is actually one very large panel and i wasn't going to take the front glass or the back glass out just to get it out because i don't i don't do glass work so i ended up pulling the seats out and I figured since the seats are coming out and I had some carpet because my carpet was nasty, I would go ahead and replace the uh, the carpet as well. Now, forgive the dirt in here. I don't have a floor mat on that side. That's just uh, just a little bit of uh, usage dirt right there. Nothing grimy or gross uh, ground into it. It's just a little bit dirty because, you know, the truck does get used. <clears throat> Excuse me. And same thing on this side. You know, it's it's a little dirty under here, but it's, it's not a show truck. I, I actually work this thing. Anyway, since the carpet was out and the seats were out and the headliner was out, I figured that was a good time to go ahead and pull the dash out because my evaporator core had this nasty restriction in it. And during the summertime months, the cooling uh, system just failed to maintain temperature. Uh, I took that opportunity to do a Cadillac dash pad swap modification, which is why we have the wood grain, wood grain, and why we have this extra large grab handle right here. Uh, part of that mod included installation of Cadillac Escalade EXT Platinum vent covers because they have the chrome and I thought they were cool. So I replaced the vents. Um, every one of these components received a fresh coat of paint after a very thorough cleaning. Now, I didn't stop there. This dash did not match my old center console. So I acquired a Cadillac Escalade center console uh, with the, uh, the really fancy luxury clock. Oh, yeah. And again, more wood grain. One more time, this got painted, that was painted. This knee bolster was painted. I redid the uh, the gauge cluster with new old stock Escalade chrome bezels. See that right there? Found those on eBay. And of course, uh, everything was painted to match. I ended up acquiring a set of door panels from an EXT uh, Escalade. I think that was the uh, like the Suburban version, which had the full panel rear door panels. Most of the Escalades were built on a Tahoe chassis and the rear doors had a cutout in them for the wheel well. But the Suburban version of the Escalade had the full panel doors. Now, these panels, when I originally found them, they were, uh, they came with the stitching and they came with the wood grain. Yeah, see the stitching right there and there? But they were in this like uh, really gross tan color. 
So what I ended up doing was disassembling these panels all the way down to uh, just, you know, the individual components. I took off the pad there, the handle here, this, uh, 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 what you want to call it, the, uh, the switch bezel. And I also ended up removing the speaker grills and the chrome surrounds around those speaker grills. Now, these speakers, they had uh, originally came with a cloth covering on them, and I removed the cloth and cleaned them up and just painted them and just left the wire mesh the same way, or just left that alone. I had to take off the emblem as well in order to get that thing painted. So these, uh, these dash panels were completely dis dash door panels were completely disassembled and refinished and repainted, and then I reinstalled them onto this truck. During my weeks of eBay shopping for used Cadillac parts, I'd also found a, uh, a replacement set of sun visors, and I installed these visors as an upgrade compared to my originals because these are a two-piece visor. So I can have some visor over here, and then I can have more visor over here, and they've got the slide outs on them for some full sun blockage action. And you guys know, being in Florida, there's a lot of sun here. But the coolest feature I found on these... Uh, these particular units is that they also came equipped with the uh, the vanity mirrors with adjustable and dimmable lights. Vanity mirrors uh, of this type were not offered on any of the Silverado and Sierra platforms, to my knowledge, I think. I'm sure, hello, I can see you. I'm sure there was some of them out there, but I ended up having to, to run a wire. I relocated the the bracket piece because the original units had a bracket which was here and unfortunately i cut a hole in that already to to fit that uh, they do make plugs that can plug that up i just have to, to order those and then i'll just put the little plug here and bolt it on uh, i caught myself on this other side and did not cut a hole in the headliner but i had to move the interior clip from this position to this position then cut a new hole and then I was able to uh, install these upgraded versions, which I think came from a, uh, a Yukon. Might've been a GMC Yukon. Uh, also from a Yukon came the, uh, the center console lid. And I swapped out this console lid because it has two features where there is one pop open section where I can, inst uh, you know, just a little cubby hole. And then of course the thing opens up and there's a, another cubby hole down below. So that's, uh, that's the reason for the, uh, uh, the armrest and the armrest swap. Now I mentioned the seats earlier. My seats were this, uh, really dark colored gray, and I don't think there's anything left in the truck. Maybe. Yeah. There's that, that dark pewter color there. The seats were originally this darker pewter colored gray and they were torn and worn out. So I, again, eBay shopping, I had found a set of full power electric seats that came from a 2002, I think it was a Chevrolet Avalanche, which is another upgrade to this truck because this thing came with uh, with power. I think the only power feature that these seats had in the originals was the uh, was the tilt. The rest of it was all manual. Plus, I got to add some lumbar support and a few other little uh, luxury items uh, when the seat swap took place. Moving on to the rear seats, and I wasn't happy about these ones because they didn't come as advertised. the The ad said that these were grade A and they are not, these are grade C at best, but I wanted to uh, do the bench seat delete modification. And I acquired these from, I think another 2002 uh, Yukon XL. Uh, the headrests are a little bit different compared to the Avalanche ones, but I don't think anybody would notice and, unless uh, I mentioned it and, and told them. I still have to clean these up, but I, I, I sort of bolted them in to get them off the shop floor. The cool feature about these is their, their captain's chair style. They've got the, the fold down armrest. This one's kind of broken and I need to fix it. But again, that's another um, semi popular upgrade to do to the Silverado crew cab uh, designs. I did end up losing the little mini bench seat in the middle, but that's cool because now I have extra storage for goodies because I don't really travel with five passengers in this truck. It's usually just uh, you know, me and maybe two other people at, at best. And sorry about the laundry, the place is a little bit lived in. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not entirely finished with it. I still have to custom fabricate the, uh, the back of this center console over here. Uh, the reason being is that the, uh, the Escalades, uh, never had a rear AC vent system that came out of the center console. That was for the Silverados only. All the Escalades had their vents up here in the headliner, but I wasn't about to try to reroute, uh, AC function to the headliner. So, um, 
I wasn't really able to do a direct swap. Uh, like I said, I've got to take pieces off my old console and then fabricate it to fit on this console and then I can put that panel back on. So this section back here is nearly complete. Uh, again, more touch up work needs to be done. I've got to find some more trim for, uh, for the seat here. I've got to cover up all this stuff, but it's uh, for the most part, we have reached a point of functionality. These seats also have heaters in them, but I have not enabled that feature yet either. I don't know if I will. I, I might just uh, leave that alone and just have regular seats. But if I, uh, if I get a hair, a wild hair going, I, I may end up uh, turning on the heaters on these. Those ones have heaters as well. Uh, and I don't know if I want to hook that up yet either. But again, rear door panels also were converted and um, painted to match. That way they would be the same panels up here and back here. Uh, most guys with the crew cab trucks that try to do the Escalade swap, they can only do the front panels because these full size rear panels are super duper rare. But I did manage to find a set and I took them apart, painted them up, restored them, cleaned them up very nicely. And uh, now they are installed in the back of my Silverado. So again, a lot of this was extremely tedious work and it did not film very well. Uh, so I didn't make full feature videos on the interior of this truck, but uh, as you can see, I put a lot of work into it and it is coming along quite nicely. So anyway, I know I said this was going to be a short video and I'm going to uh, keep to my word on that. So I'm going to get my windows up because it's been raining a bunch and I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you appreciate and enjoyed this update. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic weekend. See you guys later in the video. End of transmission.